What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bronx Pinstripe Show. The Yankees took two out of three from the Astros, Scott. Almost the, the clean sweep for the season. Even though the Astros seem to be going down the toilet this year. And listen, I'm here for their demise. Everyone who's suffered through the last eight years of them is here for them for their demise. So I was hoping the Yankees just put the final nail on the coffin on this year. Is it kind of – so our guy Neil co- compared it to the Yankees beating Pedro Martinez in 2009 finally. I'm not putting it on that level because at least that was still a World Series game and the Yankees got the better of Pedro Martinez uh, a, a number of times when it when it mattered when he was with Boston. But, but uh, yeah, I was hoping for the clean sweep this year. I must have missed that that because uh, that's an overly positive comment seemingly about what the team is and what the team did. I uh, must have missed that in the group chat. It must have been after you added me or before you I added think it was me before I added you. I think I had, yeah, I added you. And, and, and it has been, I think, three days since you're in. Are you ready to leave yet? I'm not, I'm not ready to leave yet. Um, I'm excited to bring some positivity to the, to the conversation and, um, and, and make fun of the, the I might kick you out for that, frankly, the, the just downright negativity of, of what it is. And just like, you know, as soon as someone it's, it's hilarious to me because as soon as someone does anything uh, positive on the Yankees offensively, it's oh what a shitty pitcher. <laughs> that pitcher's a piece of shit. What a, what a, the guy is completely horrible. Unless it's Soto. I can't, Unless Soto's hitting. I can't, uh, I can't, I can't not comment on that stuff. It's, it's funny to me, but uh, yeah, man, like you, 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 uh, you tell me that we take five of, or uh, six of seven uh, from the Houston Astros by May 10th uh, on this year. And I'm extremely excited. And, 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 you know, after the result, I'm extremely excited too, because they were in a position yesterday to sweep the the Astros they they fought back judge obviously hit that home run it was unfortunate where uh Soto had a a, you know a very good swing on a on a ball and and unfortunately uh was hit a defender otherwise the game would have been tied but they put themselves in the position in the ninth inning as well had Kemp stay up a little late to watch that ninth inning in case they won so he's he's been really into it by the way five o'clock game is perfect for him it's awesome. It's awesome because the the ninth inning was like right around bedtime and we just uh we extended it a little bit and He's got the same disdain for the Houston Astros, which I really appreciate now. And uh, he was and, born and the year that the the Astros. Uh, that's true. The Astros the, cheating the, began the, the spite year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it all started the the year he was the year he was you know born to be a Yankees fan. So that's a good thing to lean on. Um, in enemy territory, <laughs> born in Boston, hating the Houston Astros. The irony I don't, is still somewhere in there. I know you put but, the, um, you wanted us to pull some numbers on Judge, which we did. We'll talk about it in a second. You're right. I mean, he hit that, hit that hit that massive home run to get him a little bit closer, but he also grounded into another double play in a key spot. That yeah, but let's just get rid of all the last two week numbers because pff, throw those away and like he's been not terrible. Throw, I'm not throwing year. away the I'm not throwing away the numbers. We're conveniently Here. throwing away numbers. Let's, well, to, let's to talk about the numbers. What, seasons are no see i if anything i think that the numbers over the last two weeks skew things because he's his overall <laughs> numbers look really good over the last 14 games 16 for 50 he's got over a thousand ops he's hit five home runs a 320 batting average a 700 slugging percentage all those are good do you feel like judge is back like oh this is judge he's locked in because i don't he's still grounding into double plays he still leads the league in double plays he's still in low leverage spots is crushing the ball in high leverage spots not crushing the ball so i still don't feel uh, like down he's back. down hold on down two in the eighth inning uh is not a high leverage spot to get your your team back in the game that's not a high leverage spot i don't think that's considered a high leverage spot he's not the tying run or anything like that no but he's putting him the, he's giving them an opportunity to to tie the game in i'm the not saying inning. it's a meaningless home run i'm saying by the way it's certainly leverage, not a, it's it's anything but a meaningless home run it's an but, extremely but meaningful but by the way run. leverage is measured i don't believe that is i think that i don't give a shit is, how leverage is measured i'm using my eyeballs and okay. i know that in the eighth inning down two that is a game that is winnable and when yeah, it's an important up, run and hits a not not only hits a home run hits the piss out of the ball 473, 473 feet, feet. Yeah. Uh, longest home run for for the Yankees this year I think it was his second longest home run of his career something like that yeah I remember he hit one almost 500 feet uh in 2017 when the ball judges were golf judges balls. judge looks like he's 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 seeing the ball better he's taking walks uh there was a ball uh, the, a walk just outside the zone on the on the outside uh, of the plate that a couple weeks ago I think he's he's swing swinging and missing at pulling away uh, ball up in the zone leaving it leaving it alone spitting on it walking had two walks uh, in his first at bat the other day I think he's seen the ball well I think he's he's in much better spot and yeah you look at the what he's done over the last 
over the last two weeks. I mean, look at the season right now. And we've been absolutely glowing, understandably. And of course, he, he deserves it about Soto's production. But the production numbers of the two guys are not that far off, actually. <laughs> They're not. Look They're, at, look they've at how, been look, very different. Look at the total numbers. the the amount of the power numbers are there. The amounts the the amount of uh, opportunities and runs scored and and runs batted in in situations that they've had they're pretty close. And would you say they've and, been and judge close? has been terrible? Would you say they've been close this year? I'm telling you that the numbers are saying that they're that. But they're you've close watched the games. You've watched the games. No, they're this not is... even close. Okay, it doesn't. And that's and that's a testament to the fact that judge not not having a a good first month can. Flip that script extremely quickly. What was the most important at bat of Judge's game yesterday? It wasn't the home run. That wasn't the biggest at bat he had yesterday. It was the at bat in the fifth inning when he grounded into a double play. That was that was the most impactful, positive or negative at bat he had yesterday. That's what I'm saying. I still feel like he's not back despite the numbers. That's all I'm saying. Because you need him to come through every single opportunity. That's not how baseball works. Not saying every single opportunity. Some opportunities. He's been terrible. In high leverage spots, in important spots this year. The only one he's come through in was that ground ball base hit in uh, Toronto a few weeks ago. And again, the man has been off mechanically. Yeah. Off. To me, so that if anything, I'm, I'm looking off. at this as a glass half full because it's going to only get better from here on out. Of course it is. So what are you arguing about? The fact that the man, we're, we're looking at how many double plays he's in and, and how he's been in high leverage situations during a massive slump where his mechanics are completely off. It's not like he was hitting in low leverage situations well, during that something. massive slump either. Do you like, think, the guy was just off no matter what the situation is. Do you think his batting stance looks slightly different? I don't know. I've seen a, a number of things. People are saying he's farther away from the plate. He's a little bit more open. I, I No, I think I he's think a little bit more. Clo- I feel like his, his front leg is a little bit more closed recently than it was certainly the last couple of seasons and perhaps even earlier in the season. Now, sometimes the camera angle can mess with the perception of that. If yeah. depending on where the camera is set up at Yankee stadium versus on the road, things can look differently, but it stuck out to me yesterday, actually watching the game that I thought his, his left leg, which is his front leg at the plate was a hair more closed than it has been in recent seasons. Yeah, to me, a hair more closed doesn't mean shit, though, because these guys will – it's a feel thing. I think I think people like us who are watching this uh, as fans, watching the, the game make too much of the slightest – uh, difference that we see in batting stance or anything like that. I think, I think we make too much of it because I think on certain days there's more, there is a bit of a feel thing. You know, like maybe your maybe your legs are a little tighter than they were the day before. Maybe your, your wrist, like these guys are playing every single day. So there's going to be little aches and things and uh, their, their stance may minorly tweak uh, because of that as well. I think we make too much of that. I think for him, it's, it's, a, <clears throat> it's been a timing thing. So, you know, whether he's, whether he's making these adjustments or experimenting with slight adjustments to, to feel if he can, uh, you know, get his timing back down and, and more, more uh, just more repetitive and, and, and be able to repeat those same mechanics. I think that's more of what we're seeing. I think he's a hell of a lot more locked in again, as we've, we've stayed consistent on the thing that like, I don't see anything that's telling me that, that Aaron judge has is hurt, has been hurt at all. The last thing we heard about any injury or really noticed anything was in spring training when he came out and, to me, if I'm looking now for on May 10th, looking back for whatever reason, maybe that injury just hampered his mechanics in the beginning and, and it just took him a while to get back into those mechanics, but he does look mechanically sound right now. He looks like he's spitting on, he is spitting on pitches that he should be spitting on that he was, uh, you know, when he's, uh, when he's right. So yeah, I think he's, I think he's very close to back. I do. You think he finishes the season with more home runs or more double plays? I, I saw your little text about that. It's going to be more home runs. When will he pass? When will the when will the pass happen? June first? Will he pass it by June first? I don't know. Where is it right now? What's I think it's the... eleven to eight. It's eleven to eight. Yeah. Uh, no, he'll he'll pass it in May. Okay. Um, I also think he will pass it soon and have more home runs than double plays because, damn, if he doesn't, <laughs> things are gonna go sideways for the for the Yankees. But. Yeah, we wanted to just talk about some takeaways from the Astros series. I I still think there was energy in the crowd for like a Tuesday at the stadium midweek against the Astros. Didn't you feel like there was some extra energy because it was Houston? Yeah, and and also it, it doesn't it doesn't hurt that the the leadoff guy 
every single game is a guy that the stadium, whether he's there or not, ch chants, fuck Altuve. And no matter whether he's there or not, then when the man's standing in front of you, uh, those those chants get louder, the energy gets louder. So yeah, it makes, uh, of course, it should be. I still have a disdain for them. I'm teaching my child to have a disdain for them. <laughs> they, they, what they did was, was you know, you, you can't come back from that. And I don't but care how many people are still on that team. This it's might like, be the last me, it's year Bregman, though. It's Bregman and Altuve. Right, and, but Bregman and, might be gone next year. So it literally yeah. might just be Altuve after this year. And the funny thing is for me, like personally, I think Altuve was the one that I like cared about the least of the guys who, who were who were doing things. It was Bregman it was always public enemy number one for me. Correa. Um, and, and Correa. Correa, well, both of them, they were pretty pretty equal. Both smug, you know, uh, non-accountable non motherfuckers that that just just acted like they didn't do anything wrong and that pissed me off and Altuve, at least you know in his silence felt a little contrite i guess verlander is still there and still might be there for, for until he's 45 as cone said did you, did you catch that he's like verlander wants to be tom brady and pit and and play until he's 45 so that that got me wondering will there be a roast of justin verlander at some point uh i i don't think it will be as as uh as cared for or as cared about as the tom brady one which by the way i was i was shocked in how uh how 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 pointed it got how visceral it got, it got it got <laughs> ugly fast and i was like yes it was so good give me more of this it was yeah. so good i mean it was it was, it was so calculated by tom brady but it was still so good yeah it was good he surprises me actually when he starts when when he opens his mouth today he it's it still surprises me some of the things that come out of his mouth. I don't I guess I don't expect him to be as like as like cocky and snarky as he is cuz he he would always be team guy, team guy, team guy, you know, it would never really about him and ever, since post retirement, or really since like post he left no. New post England, Belichick. <laughs> yeah. He's he's definitely been yeah. more of this like really cocky guy that 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 says a lot of shit and I just never really I never as a as a Jets fan like I want, I wanted to hate him as much as I can. And I did, I hated the Patriots and hated him. But at the same time, I'm like, there's, there's no rivalry here. This guy's just kicking our ass. He's just that good. Like there's, it's, it's hard to not have an appreciation uh, for, for what he did. And unfortunately the Jets never really put up all that much of a fight except for a couple of years, but yeah. Justin Verlander roast. It, while I don't think it would happen because he's not a big enough star. There's some yeah. stuff you could talk about with Justin. Verlander. There were some pictures. If you remember, there were some pictures oh, yeah. of Justin Verlander that could, uh, that could make a good 10 minutes of roasting. Anyway, I'd be more interested in an A-Rod roast. He'll never, <clears throat> this came up uh, in a conversation I was having recently. He would never do it. He's too, way too sensitive. He's so, he would literally Adam, ball and he would start bawling. He would cry. He would start which crying. I, I, look, has he ever done the right thing? Uh, there was a brief time in the eroticence in 2015. There was like a three month period. He did the right thing. Okay. So um, very brief and, and, you know, for all intents and purposes, he's kind of staying out of the, out of the, uh, yeah, he's kind of just doing his own thing, working for with working the Minnesota, for... Minnesota uh, Timberwolves. Yeah. But he's like, he's doing, there. he's doing commentary for baseball. Like he's, he's, I don't think he is at this point overbearing. Yeah. Well, I, I choose to, to, tune him out also yeah. so there's a, there's a choice there in in uh, like listening to the things he says but a roast would be fun do you think jeter would, would do a roast it would get ugly no nah, jeter's too good jeter would never do a roast jeter would never do a roast no not in a million years i, I actually i don't even think there would it, it would be a boring roast <laughs> because uh, barring a few things we know about jeter he, he's just not that interesting <laughs> like it's just not there's not enough there there's not enough meat on that bone there's way too much meat on the a-rod bone for a roast which is why he would never do it yeah uh a couple of other things that we were talking about so Luis hill has set a franchise record for only allowing 18 hits through his first seven starts which is uh again franchise record and 43 hits allowed in his first 14 professional starts is the second lowest in baseball history in baseball history, that's crazy. That's a crazy stat. So, and we we know where his walks are. the The way that runners are on base notice, I didn't say base field, runners <laughs> or his walks. But so it, it, it kind of leads to the conversation about is that okay? Do you just do you just kind of live with the walks? Because at the uh, he's he's been much improved, and I think he's been he's been very good. Uh, you know, since he's come back from this this uh, this surgery, and but the walks are still there. 
the walks are still there. And and as I've talked about, like his Achilles heel has always been him yeah, being able to Achilles throw heel. the ball over the uh well he had a Tommy John, not Achilles heel. No, but his but last he, name. Oh, right, right, right. Um, he has, uh, it's one of those things I, you know, I just, I wonder if we just tolerate and if there's ever an improvement, if he can ever really hone, hone in and, and, and knock those walks down, like his stuff, that's what, that's what the, the, the stat shows to me is how good his stuff is, uh, because he doesn't let guys barrel up his, uh, his pitches. And we've only seen it happen a couple of times, right? The Brewers had had some, some, yeah. they hit him the hardest probably, um, that was the one actually this season that we've really, that he's really got, it was that start. Spiked. And then the other start that stands out in a really negative way was that Toronto start where he literally couldn't find the plate for three straight innings. Yeah. He just lost it though. That wasn't really the, uh, you said, do we just tolerate it? I think to a certain extent, right. We're looking for small improvements for him. Sure. So we, it's not like he goes out next start. And if he walks some guys, it's like, Oh, this guy sucks. No. But if, the season goes on and we don't see improvement. And certainly if he's with the team next year and starting with the team next year and he's not improving, then no, you don't just tolerate it. You're looking for him to improve because clearly the potential is there. No, I understand that. But, but sometimes, you know, guys, guys have um, little intricacies that are part of their game. And his right now is not allowing guys to barrel up his pitches. And if that means that he's got to be, outside the plate a little bit more often than, uh, and avoid, you know, big contact, avoid hard hit balls, then maybe that's just part of his game as well. As long as he's able to navigate through it. I mean, Blake Snell has won two Cy Young awards doing a very similar thing where he gets into situations, but he gets out of them. Like the walks are tolerated because he's not going to give into a guy and someone like heel who has very good stuff. You could make a counterpoint to that and say, well, if he's around the strike zone and his stuff is that good, then he'd be even better. What but, if he turns into AJ Burnett? Because you're you know, kind of describing AJ Burnett, um, electric stuff. I, he could. I think he, it's hard to have sustainability with it. Is is where I, mean, I he think had, he, he had a pretty long career. He did. Uh, was a very effective pitcher. He was never a number one pitcher because of his command issues. He would right. have starts though where he would pitch seven innings and allow one hit and strike out twelve guys and be unhittable. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. And that, but this is Heel's second year, a real first first, first year. full no, year. Let's call first it full yeah. year. Yeah. And, and he's, to me, the demeanor of the guy, I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard for me to compare someone who's had a long career and we already know what that looks like to a guy who's just starting out. So I, I understand your point. Like no, I can say the same thing about Michael was, Pineda, but, but AJ Burnett was the best version of Michael Pineda because AJ Burnett was able to harness it. Certainly he had moments where he was, he was terrible, but he was for the most part able to harness it. So when you said, is it something that's just like an intricacy of his game? Like I would say that about AJ Burnett An in intricacy of his game was lack of command at times. Walks Effectively at times. wild, as they say. Sure. And, but he was able to harness it in an effective way where he was a very good major league pitcher. Was he frustrating? Absolutely. I was insanely frustrated with AJ Burnett. Then there were other times <laughs> game two of the world series against the Phillies where he, nutted up and single-handedly turned the series around well and that, that's the other pieces and this is this is something that we'll we'll monitor and and see how his career plays out but it does matter when those walks happen if you're if you're buckling down and you're able to throw strikes when you need to and you know uh you know a couple a couple guys on two outs you need a strikeout you need you need a, a particular thing in a moment and he's able to get it because he's able to throw the ball over the plate in that moment um, then to me, the walks, if you're just trying to be a little bit more careful with a guy so that he's not able to hurt you and you know, you can pitch to the next guy more effectively. And that's kind of what the numbers are telling you as well. Then, then yeah, I can tolerate that. And to me, if you're looking at total base runners, walks, hits, that's more of, of the barometer of what a guy is, because if you turn those walks into base hits, let's say the, like his line, um, Ilya uh, put it up the, or just, just said it, it was, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but it was, um, one, one hit, four walks, I think, and and five or six strikeouts, something like that. If you turn those, if you turn those walks into hits, are we saying anything negative about him at all? If he did walk zero people and gives up four or five hits in a start like that, I think not. I think that we look at that completely different. If you had to take a guess, what is his whip? I, I don't know. I said, if you had to take a guess, play the game. If I had to take a guess, <laughs> I can see you looking at your computer as if you're going to Google it right now. 
this is not fun. Just say say a number. Say 50 for all I care. Say a number. Well, I'm going to just bother you on this one. Uh, 2.37. That's, a, that's outrageous. It's 1.13 <laughs> is his whip. He leads the league in walks. So he's not giving up hits, but he's still walking a crap ton of guys, which is allowing meaning over essentially over a base runner per, per inning, which is, is still dangerous. And to, to your point, one more hit. In that Toronto game, one single hit by the Blue Jays in the first three innings of that game, and Luis Hill is knocked out of that game. I understand that. And again, you go back to that one, but I, t- I just I think that was a young guy losing his composure in that game, so it's hard for me to, no, no, to I, look at that I, game I, as the example. I agree that's what that is. But, but, but if his stuff wasn't so good and he was not able to uh, uh, allow, miss bats and allow weak contact to, uh, to, as effectively as he is – if there's a point where he just makes one mistake in, in, that is hittable in that instance, that game is so different. Yeah. Can we pull up the, pull up his line for Milwaukee? Uh, the one where well, he got that one was the one where more. he gave up two, two run homers. And that was like the first know, time I'm, I'm, where we're like, Oh, I'm, they actually hit him. I'm interested to see how many guys he walked in that game as well, because there's to me, like we were just saying, there's a, there's a line in the sand somewhere that, that says the, the hits, are tolerable. The walks are tolerable, depending on if you're doing both you're at the up same both. time or not. Tolerable. Yeah, right. Yeah. So again, that you go back to the Toronto one. You're you're saying that if there was a hit, yeah, of course, I, I know that. But he was he lost his, he lost the plate and was giving up you know an, an insane amount of walks. Hmm. Uh, if those are hits, then you're like, oh man, they're they're on this guy. This guy's this guy's you know giving up way too. But much. not just hits one hit. Like the, the, like the Blue Jays were not able to get one hit with runners on base in that game, which is why I think they only scored one or two runs against him in those five innings. While yeah. the guys are looking up the line against Milwaukee, Scott, you five, know, five innings, seven hits. Okay. Five innings, seven hits, but, but, but two walks, two walks. Okay. You know, those items in your closet that you just always reach for, for me, my new go-to pair of clothes is my doer jeans. I think I was trying, I was thinking about this. I think I've legitimately worn them like 19 out of the last 20 days. And the one day that I didn't wear them was the time I washed them. Doer jeans are perfect for anything, working at home, going to the office, running errands, going out to dinner. Anything you want to do, the list goes on. Doer makes stretch performance denim and lifestyle apparel for both men and women. Their elevated styles stand apart and are made to last. They're made from natural fibers for high stretch, breathability, and moisture absorption, which is definitely key as the weather is starting to heat up. The temperature regulation fabric keeps you fresh, cool, and dry all day. And the antibacterial treatment means less washing. Like I said, only once in the last couple of weeks for me. Trust me, you'll be reaching for your Dewar jeans again and again. Orders your, order yours today. Check out Dewar's flagship stores in LA or Denver, or you can shop online at Dewar.com slash Bronx. Right now, our listeners get 20% off site-wide when you use our URL, D-U-E-R dot com slash Bronx. This is an amazing deal. Do not wait. Get 20% off right now by going to shopdoer.com slash Bronx. Sticking with the rotation, we wanted to talk about Marcus Stroman as well, who I think we figured out you also put the jinx on. I think so. I commended uh, his efforts and uh, praised what he what he has been and i i still i still uh stand by what he is uh off off the mound and and the the way that he has affected the dugout but yeah he's not been great since i said something about him yesterday so, in apologize. five and two thirds gave up nine hits he walked two guys i i thought yesterday's stuff was just extremely hittable and i'm not yeah. saying that's been the case every time he struggled because i think prior to this his past two starts it was the walks that got him where he walked five guys in each of those previous two starts but but I'm just like yesterday I was looking at a guy I'm just like he, he doesn't have confidence he can just get guys out which is so it, I mean nine hits in less than six innings is very, to me it's the opposite hittable. yeah it's the opposite effect of of Luis Heel whereas Luis Heel if he were in the strike zone you could, one could argue that um, his stuff will play and he'll still be effective but Stroman St- Stroman has to nibble he's got to hit corners he's got he's got to live uh, on the edges and when he's not he's either walking a guy or leaving it over the plate for for it to be hittable so i think it's a it's kind of a tale of two different t- style pitchers and um yeah he it's a grind it does feel like a grind he does lock down and 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 limit damage yeah the games you know, never get well out of when hand. you see what his what what's his whip his whip's got to be closer to two you know it's got to be cl- it's got to be close to two uh, yeah it, it, you're right he does lock it down so the game doesn't get out of hand like the yesterday yesterday the yankees were in that game 
Um, but that home run gives up a lot of ground balls, as we yeah. mentioned last, uh, yesterday. Last he gave up two. That's how you get out. Two pretty massive bombs. Was a Singleton yeah. hit the ball basically to the upper tank in left field. Yeah. Can you guys also look up longest home runs at Yan- at the new Yankee Stadium? Because I feel like I don't know how far that one went. I know Judge's went four seventy three yesterday, but how far? I forget what the distance was on that one, but that's impressive. They, they were calling out Judge has uh, two home runs or more than that, two or four ninety two or four ninety three. The four ninety something, uh, you know. But at Yankee Stadium, I'm saying the yeah. the one at Seattle. Remember it broke that broke Statcast where they said it went like 450 yeah. feet, but it like legitimately left the stadium. We're like, well, that's not possible. It was, I re- the, it was the biggest moonshot I've ever seen since Josh Hamilton in the in the in the. In I the remember dirt. one from Judge against Baltimore in 2017 that went to the very back of the bleachers. I feel in left field. I feel like that was one of the farthest ones ever. I remember Raul Banez in one of the early days of Yankee Stadium <laughs> would have been a, would have been an out in left field today. In uh, in Camden Yards, are <laughs> yeah. you talking about Yankee Stadium? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, but it might have been an out at the original Yankee Stadium, <laughs> but um, Banya's when he was with Seattle back in the day, Yankee Stadium hit one to the back of the bleachers in right field, and Banya's hit a couple tanks near the up the third deck in right field for the Yankees. So I'm curious where this Singleton, what this single, I know it's down the line, so it's never going to be as far. So Singleton's home run went 442 feet, and that, but like. Sean- that that doesn't do it justice. I'm well, sorry. That's I mean that's P- the, pedestrian. No, that's the I know number, but um, so I've, there's been quite a few that have went over that. This article yeah. that I was looking at right now has like probably ten that would be longer than that. But judges, uh, four seventy three would rank like fifty sixth. While Lubanias is on here, fifty went four seventy seven. What year about? does it say? Does it give the years? Yeah, two thousand nine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember that. And then Judge has the longest at um, 496. 496. Something. That was the one off of Stroman. If you remember that, that hit the retired numbers when he was a rookie. Yeah. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's that right. was so I, I mixed up. It wasn't. It must not have been against Baltimore. It was against then Toronto at the time. Second longest was 495. That was against Baltimore. Okay, so, so that's the one I'm remembering. Both in 2017. You know? so yeah. Right there. 2017 was just like, that was prime for Judge because the ball was a golf ball and Judge was just, you know, he was a rookie swinging out of his mm-hmm. shoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he he was uh, young and excited, not not physically. Ute, in his prime, he, he was youthful. He was a youth. Um, anything else you want to touch on from the Astro series? Actually, the the something you had mentioned was the shift, quote unquote, against Soto. The show, the, yeah, I was just again uh, remembering to the Tuesday night game. Uh, it was the first inning. Soto uh, just peppers a ball down third base. Bregman's nowhere to be seen. It's just, it's, it's funny to me that teams are still shifting as much as they are. And I know it's not a technical shift, but it is. It's an they're old, going old up to the line, the sense that which is the second base back. <laughs> they're going up the middle. Yeah, they're shading up the middle on the left side and just completely giving him the line, which is just an insane thing for me. The fact that you don't play this guy straight up is uh, is wild because he has proved time and time again that he will put the ball wherever you're getting. He's this type of superstar, and this is another feather in his cap, just the type of player that he is. The other day, he runs out of an infield base hit, like busting it down the line, safe, uh, you know, to to extend an inning. You want, what um, else happened on and, that play? Yeah, Volpe had a dumb base running hit because he wasn't looking in front of him. It was not Glaber's fault. How was, was that Volpe's not fault. fault? Because Volpe's got to be looking in front of him. He wasn't. But Glaber was jogging, assuming it was just going to be an out. It's a 3-2 pitch with two outs. You ju- you, you, the yeah. ball goes in play. You run hard. Okay, Glaber should be going, but Volpe also should be aware of the situation and looking Volpe in front Volpe should have looked on. up, but he was probably figuring, ah, Glaber's going to be running hard here, so I'm just going to bust it too. Uh, frankly, uh, frankly, I don't want Glaber rounding like he's going to go with the ball still in the infield like that. That's That's a little bit... Even if he's even if he's safe, the ball is still going to be in the in the first baseman's mitt, and he's got to play it to you at, at home by a lot. If, probably. But if Glaber was running hard, he would have been around the third base bag when the first baseman was fielding the ball. Yeah, and then thrown out at home plate probably. probably. I don't know. I think that's the, with the ball in front of you, with the play in front of you. I don't mind him not trying to to score on that. I think it's it's no. Uh, he shouldn't have tried to anyway, score on it point, because he was jogging. The, well, the, no, he's trying to score is the key word. The point is, is that Soto does whatever the defense gives him and will hit the ball over the fence. 
If you give him third base, he'll take it. He'll bunt it. He'll slap it down there. So the fact that they're they're still shifting on him, acting like, well, the numbers are saying that he's going to pull it. The majority. He just he looks at the situation and says, your numbers mean nothing to me. And, and does a, you know, stares down the pitcher, probably stares at Bregman while he's peppering the ball down the line and, and just does the thing. He's, he's unbelievable. Yeah. The spray so, chart must yeah, say just another, he pulls the ball on the ground. Cause he definitely does not pull the ball in the air. He does hit the ball in the air, all fields, but it must just be spray chart on the ground to the, to the right side. Yeah. Well, keep, keep doing it then. Sure. Keep doing it and see what yeah. happens. But yeah, it is kind of every time I see it and I'm like, I think a ball should be up the middle, but then the, the second baseman or the shortstop is basically there. I'm like, okay, I know he's not technically over the bag, but this is basically the same thing as it used to be. It's, it's still, there, there are, the there big are difference balls. is you what don't that have does, the though, short right fielder, second baseman, huge yeah, difference. That's there. the biggest change is a guy hits what should be a line drive single to right field. And it one hops the second baseman playing 70 feet in back of, you know, the dirt, which, which puts the second baseman in a different position as well. Yeah. So the, it, it affects two things. It affects the, the short, uh, the, the base hits a right field, yep. like you just mentioned, but it also affects the positioning of the second baseman because now he knows that there's not a guy behind him. Uh, playing backup so he's got to be probably further off the bag closer i would say it's probably impacting those a lot more than up the middle stuff yeah which do you think it's done it's 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 allowing done the i I think it's desired intent i think it's done i think so you're i mean i think we're seeing more guys spraying it around the field too and i think that's part of it they're they're able to hit more line drives i think that when you took the when you had that that rover in right field you are taking away a line drive and that's a problem. And that's what started the launch angle piece yeah. is that you got to hit it over the ship and now they can hit <laughs> it, it through the ship. It was demoralizing. So many guys talked about, I remember Tashara talked about that over there. He's like, I would hit a line drive, a hard line drive to right field. It would be an out. And it's just like, oh, that sucks. Yeah. What is yeah. the league batting average? He, um, so this is the second year of the shift. So what is the league batting average? I guess 2020, it would be 2022, 2023. And then this year, if you guys could look that up. While you're looking that up, the Yankees are going to be playing in Tampa Bay this weekend. If you're looking for tickets, you got to be using Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, meaning buying tickets to a baseball game on Game Time is faster and easier. Game Time, the Game Time app has so many great features. My personal favorites are the flash deals, so you can see what sections the best deals are in. I'm sure the Trop has got some good deals. All in pricing, select uh, this option so you do not hit get hit with surprise fees at checkout. And also seat views, real pictures from inside the venue, so you know what you're getting before you buy. Scott, you've been to the Trop. What kind of experience is it inside I, that that Thunderdome? Well, Andrew, uh, the Thunderdome is a tough one to. to, to, I, a tough I'm, way to I'm talking about it. from the volume. The ah, oh, I'm going to miss that flash again. No, John and Susan ba- bantering about the volume at the Trop. The flash deals really are coming from the strobe lights from the DJ in right field that that is out there playing and making that place feel like a uh, minor league hockey arena. The the concrete jungle that they have down in Tampa, maybe it's going to be gone soon. But you can definitely get some good deals down there. A lot of Yankee fans are going to be. Uh, I, I assume I assume you're not going to get the view from the tarped off section up in the uh, up in the top of the bowl because that's usually not a, an area that they choose to fill uh, with anything but a plastic tarp. So game time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets to sporting events, but you can also get tickets for concerts, comedy shows, theater, and much more. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section in the same row for less money, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code Bronx for $20 off your first purchase terms apply. Once again, create an account and redeem code B R O N x for 20 bucks off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed we have the batting average stuff yeah it's um actually down this year from where it was it's at 240 for the year uh last year God damn it. 48 <laughs> 248 so it's down eight points i know it's, it's small sample, points, but... but in 2022 it was 243 in 2021 it was 241 so so nothing's no, changed. Nothing's really changed. Well, I, I guess 242 to it was, went from 242 to 248. It went from Yeah, but here's the difference. I don't know what what about when when you look at uh what how they're getting on base, how that batting average is is where it is 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 the is the mix different because before uh you're hitting the ball 
the singles were home runs, <laughs> doubles were home runs, triples were home runs, and now you're actually getting singles, doubles, and triples. Yeah, and typically early season offenses are always down. Offenses pick up in the summer months. So maybe if we look at this again after the All-Star break, those numbers are closer to what they were last year. You never know. Yeah, they're also not that far off right now. Well, 240 to 248 is kind of a big difference. Yeah. That's a that's a it's not nothing. It's not nothing. It's not nothing. It's not so nothing. another stat I had the guys pull be, was the Yankees cleanup production. And I was actually surprised by this because Verdugo has been really good in the cleanup spot. And so I was like, oh, the Yankees are finally getting some production out of their cleanup spot. They did not get that at all last year. But overall for the season, the Yankees cleanup spot in 2024 has been worse than it was in 2023. Verdugo has been excellent in the cleanup spot in a relatively small sample size. He's got a 133 OPS plus, but Stanton in that spot, a 48 OPS plus Rizzo in that spot, a 58 OPS plus last year, the Yankees cleanup hitters combined for a 217 batting average, 294 on base, which is just so abysmal 391 slugging 668 OPS and an 80 OPS plus. But overall collectively, it seems when Rizzo and Stanton are hitting cleanup, they suck when they're hitting somewhere else in the lineup. They're a little bit better. Rizzo, or excuse me, Verdugo hasn't been in the cleanup spot a ton, but he's been good when he's been there. He's been really good. And, and Tuesday night's game was the Verdugo game, you know, from coming up. And again, like that just goes to what I was talking about. Soto Soto's just, just passing the baton when the baton, when the moment it calls for a, a baton pass passes the baton, lets the other guys do it. And Verdugo comes up and, and, and drills that, uh, that three run home run to, uh, to get the, the Yankees, back in the game. And again, Tuesday and Wednesday nights were, were like carbon copy games where Yankees gave up a home run to Kyle Tucker in the first inning and then came back in the second um, and put up and put up runs, similar pitching stats. Like they were very similar games, but for Dugo also in the next inning, or I forget what inning it was. It was early in the game where he made that nice uh, sliding play in left field as well. So um, yeah, it's been a tale of, of, of different, uh, different hitters, whomever, everybody else. And then for Dugo in that spot. So He's been really good, man. Like, I don't know what that says. I really don't on, on on where in the lineup it matters and how psychologically it affects the way that you do things. Um, but what it does matter to me is that the production in that spot is is important because obviously it's behind Soto and behind Judge. And you're seeing now Judge get on base more. You're seeing Judge have a little bit more production. So there's more opportunity for that number four hitter as well. Uh, Judge is tied this. for the league with Soto in walks. Yeah. And he's, he's got the same amount of home runs as Soto and he's not trailing much in, in runs batted in as Soto. So as, 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 as bad of a, an April that, that we all saw from Aaron judge and that he was not locked in his production numbers are right there. Still. Um, we were talking about this, I, I guess in that text chat, which for me is basically just turned into a, a very, very mini Twitter, <laughs> but, uh, that uh, this felt like there might be a brawl this this week <laughs> between the Yankees and Astros. Yeah. Obviously, it didn't happen. But there was some contentiousness no. uh, on Tuesday night. I think it was Tuesday night. And we were like, okay, who's yeah, going to be the instigator for the Yankees? And we all settled on Verdugo to be the instigator. Mm -hmm. Verdugo definitely would be one of those guys. Um, and then I said, uh, I could see Stroman. I could see Stroman hitting someone. And I could see Radon. I would have liked to see Radon have the ball on Wednesday night. That would have been a great opportunity just to start off the game. <laughs> just drill the someone. The, start right by, the game you know, first pitch. With, uh, with, with a backdrop of fuck Altuve <laughs> chance, he just drills Altuve right in the center of the back. You know, what, whether that clears the benches or just gets the, the stadium completely hyped, it would have been a good move. It would have been a good move for him as a New York Yankee to be honest. And, and I'm a little disappointed he didn't do it. I would think that, you know, someone of his emotional uh, – the way that he wears his emotion, like that would have been something maybe that was on his mind because it would have been, would have been a good thing to see. And yeah, I, I, it was close. It was, it was definitely close. There were some, some hit, hit uh, you know, the game was out of right. hand uh, and some guys getting hit. The Yankees. I'm not forgetting a brawl between these two teams since let's call it since 2017, right? Like there's not been a brawl between these two teams. That I can remember. The big brawls the Yankees have had in recent years was obviously the Detroit one back in 2017. They had the Red Sox one with Tyler Austin and, and Aaron Judge's mosh pitting. Uh, but those are like the two that stick out in my mind. I know, I know there's been some other some other dust ups, but I don't remember one against Houston. 
Yeah, the Detroit one, Austin Romine. Just no, David, you just remember D Rob sprinting from the outfield? Yeah, but Austin Romine was just getting his head pounded. No, he du- he ducked, dodged, dipped, and dived. <laughs> he pulled, he pulled the dodge. There ball. was. There was a, there was, yeah, there was a, there was some, that was an interesting one. The, 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 having David Robertson sprint in was the greatest. I remember talking about that 2017 brawl as a unifying moment for that team because they kind of took off after that. That was August. I want to, I want to say that was mid to late August and they obviously were having a good season, but I, I don't know that they were fully clicking in the second half. Judge was struggling from his injury from the home run derby. They seemed to be in a little bit of a lull. And then I feel like after that brawl, they played much better. A good brawl can can you know you you go to you go to fight and battle with uh, with a group of dudes like there's a there's a there's a camaraderie that cannot be uh, that cannot be stated. You can't you can't put a there's no litmus test for what what that does to uh, there's no analytic that that you can show me that's going to tell me what it does for a clubhouse. But but you're goddamn right if there's a fight and there are fisticuffs and there's guys are out there you know throwing uh th- throwing haymakers like that is the type of shit that brings you together unfortunately so, yeah carlos carlos had an opportunity when when the yankees are kicking no, see, that's the ass. thing though they didn't need, the yankees have are having a good season the astros are not having a good season so the yankees didn't need the brawl at that point oh it's salt in the wound are you kidding me this is the last time you're going to see them for in the regular season, you know what? Put it on the Houston Astros to to um, to 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 see you again in the playoffs. Put it on the Houston Astros to rebound after that. But you know what? When you're down, throw one in their uh, in, their in the hole. back of their superstar. Would it? I love it. I would have. I would have. I would have felt so differently <laughs> about him if he had done. How that. shocked would you be to see the Astros turn around and make the playoffs? Not shocked at all. <laughs> I was going to say, probably not shocked. I mean, they're, they've dug themselves a massive hole. What are they, 11 games under 500 now? Um, and it is great. It's the NL West. That's the reason why. And I know that the uh, the World Series champion came from the NL West last year. But for whatever reason, that that division just feels like it's always obtainable uh, from by the Houston Astros. And they could go on a tear like anyone could go on a tear. Their offense is still top is five, still top five offense like, in the league. Alvarez, uh, Kyle Tucker, Altuve is having a good year. Like those guys can rake still. And Bregman's and Bregman done, done shit, shit, and they had to send Abreu down to the minors because he literally can't put bat on ball. They're, he might not he come might back, not, up, but if their pitching gets a little bit better, they could turn things around and, and be competitive. One hundred percent. Their pitching is is exactly what, and they brought in Hayes has a, a six way to bolster the isn't bullpen. It, isn't it? I don't know what this is. This is definitely just made up in my head. But they sign Abreu as a free agent. He goes to the Astros, and there's just something tainted about them, and he absolutely sucks. They sign Hader as a massive free agent, biggest uh, closer contract in history. He goes to the Astros. He's been the best relief pitcher in baseball the past few years. Eh, something's tainted about this team, and he sucks right now. I know he closed the game out yesterday, but eh, it's something something nice about yeah. that. He had a pretty nasty slider yesterday. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I think that guy's probably going to be filthy at the end of the day, um, and 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 that's not going to last. So their bullpen, which would had been a strength, I I expect to to kind of settle in and find it. And then uh, you know they've they've gotten some good starting pitching performances. Obviously Verlander was knocked up by us uh, quite a bit, and I hope that continues. Knocked up, but I mean knocked around, um, both knocked up and knocked around. And I uh, I expect. Um, I expect their pitching to to settle in, and their offense is just very good. So yeah, I think they're probably going to make a run, and would not surprise me if they if they take uh, one of the wild cards or even. Unfortunately, the I think though if they do make a run, that means they're playing really good to get into the playoffs, and that could be scary to run into them at a time where they're like, oh, they played six fifty ball down the stretch or something like that. Yeah, so let's hope that they they find this heater in the middle of July for a <laughs> month plus, and then fall back down to earth a little bit and just squeak something out. Uh, a couple of injury um, updates. So Marinaccio pitched yesterday. He was optioned after the game to make room for Nick Birdie, who's back from from his rehab. Tommy Canely also started a rehab assignment on Wednesday with the single A Tampa. Oswald Peraza started a rehab assignment. So this is a, basically two months since his injury, right? Because he got hurt early March, I want to say. Yeah. It, yeah, it was it was it was like a good three weeks before spring training was over four weeks before spring training was over i want to say it was like early no later than mid-march on him so we're we're approaching call it two months of 
And the injury definitely be, was was worse than anybody expected. I mean, at, at the beginning of that thing, thought it was going to be a week or so, and then uh, they just you know decided to to hold him back. I, I don't know where he's where this where he has a a place to play besides AAA and just win yeah. Wins if for, someone goes down, you know, potentially exactly, an injury because they got John Birdie as the utility infielder that. Birdie, if birdie. they if if Peraza never goes down in spring, he probably makes the team as the birdie role. Yeah, birdie probably That's doesn't get acquired. Birdie doesn't get acquired. Yeah. yeah. And Birdie, uh, I'm interested. I'm 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 very interested to see what the uh, the the John Birdie Yankees uh, with with him in, in a longer stretch because he does add something on, on some of the off days. It gives guys uh, more flexibility in what they can do, and he's just a different type of player. I like I. As I said before, like it's unfortunate that his injury was there. I like the acquisition. I think the acquisition was, a, as far as fit wise with this team, perfect for what you was saw it last night though in the, in the ninth inning where they had to pinch hit Birdie. I think they pinch hit Birdie for for Wells and then Trevino for uh, Oswaldo against Hader to get some righties up there. Although uh, Oswaldo, I guess, said I don't want to switch hit <laughs> this time. whatever. Still. Not having a better right-handed bat against a tough landed left-handed pitcher is tough there. Which I'm, I'm not saying like, oh, why don't you have someone like it's DJ LeMahieu? Like if DJ LeMahieu was here, then well, I guess he might be starting. But you know what I'm saying? Like, not he would be well, starting. He, he might not. Maybe he's not starting that day though. You never know, right? Like it's so. There, there's a lot of guys out there that you're gonna have. The, the rotation becomes uh, – the rotation of guys becomes – when you have LeMahieu out there, you have uh, Dominguez who's uh, – you know I know you're going to mention him who's, who's uh, probably going to be back sooner than – at least the activities are, are uh, leading to the fact that he might be back and ready sooner what than did we, we say expected. La- what did we say? You're going to have more of a rotation of guys in there that can, that can do damage, and some days guys aren't going to What did we say about Jason Dominguez, though? Do not rush him. They have the luxury of not rushing him this year because of the outfield production that they've had obviously from Soto Verdugo has been excellent. I, I think that's going to be the case though. I think they're not going to rush him. I think he's going to dictate how he's, he is. I, you can't, you can't deny a guy though, who looks extremely healthy and is hitting the ball. Well, you know, in, in, uh, in minor league games. So he's going to dictate how, how, how they play yeah. this. Yeah. You know, if he's if he's mashing over uh, a ten to fifteen game span and looks completely healthy, what's the point in keeping him in the minor yeah, leagues? Yeah, yeah. All right, so we mentioned Tampa there, nineteen and nineteen, six and four in their last ten. Friday's pitching matchup uh, is Clark Schmidt versus Bradley, who's making his season debut for Tampa. Cortez versus Little on on Saturday, and then no starter announced on Sunday for Tampa. Luis Hill will go for the Yankees. Um, Tampa, I guess you know off to a rough start, started to turn it around. Starting to turn around. And, you know, they have um, mid season round, right, you know, right around the all-star break. They, there's, there's pitchers that are coming back as well. So, you know, if they're able to hang around, uh, they're going to get a bolster in their pitching staff um, at some point this year. I don't know what the injury updates are for the guys like Shane Baz and uh, some of these other guys that are going to be coming back. But um you know, Springs is another one. Like they're they're getting guys back uh, at some point this year. So if they're within a uh, you know a puncher's uh, chance of of a wild card or you know a division, wouldn't surprise me if they make a run as well because they're going to get healthier on the pitching side, which has been a problem for them. All right, two more things before before we wrap up. But first, I want to tell you about Unified Healing. Whether you are a world class athlete or a podcaster like us, we understand the importance of mental and physical well being and proper recovery for top-notch performance. That's why we're excited Unified Healing is sponsoring the Bronx Pinstripe Show. Unified Healing is a new and innovative global network of wellness centers powered by Energy Enhancement System, or EE System. If you haven't heard of this, which you probably have if you've been listening to the show, because I've been telling you about it every damn episode, then you'll want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation. Whether you are in the New York City area or anywhere around the globe, access to a center is easy and affordable. If you're interested in experiencing the EE system technology for yourself. Go to unifiedhealing.com slash Bronx to learn more and find a center near you. That is U-N-I-F-Y-D healing.com slash Bronx. No material or testimonial on the Unified Healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your phys- uh, physician or other health care provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regimen, including EE system. 
reading scott reading and we're going to be doing some more reading because we got some mailbags but before we get to those mailbags this uh this wilson Contreras arm fracture is crazy so yeah um jd martinez if you haven't seen the the video jd martinez swinging hits Contreras's left forearm not his glove his left forearm because Contreras is set up so damn close to the plate to catch and frame the ball because analytics has said you can get more strikes you can steal more strikes the closer you are to home plate to make it look better for the umpire so he is setting up literally on top of the plate so much so that JD Martinez who I also do think this is like a, a perfect storm of things because I'm pretty sure JD Martinez is like a deep in the box type of hitter long swing type of hitter um and he just breaks his damn arm with a swing it is nasty yeah catcher's interferences have been up um because of uh of, of what this looks you know the the framing they're able to reach out further grab the ball at a at a better point before it breaks um but yeah what's breaking is a is a forearm <laughs> not not great so the robo ops are gonna the robo umps are gonna take care of this. They're gonna save guys uh save guys forearms, extend catching careers. Well, our guy's gonna start wearing forearm guards like they wear shin guards. <clears throat> no, I think the MLBPA is gonna be like, You see this? Do you see what's happening? The the umpires are so oh, you're bad. Put, you're putting this on them. the umpire. This is the we umpire's have, we fault. We have to trick them. <laughs> We have to trick them in calling strikes. So the my guys are putting them arm and limb and in 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 danger. They're they're putting their bodies out there so that they can try to trick these guys because they're not calling strikes. Bring in the ro- MLBPA. It's like bring in the the robo umpires. Extend the life of catchers uh, throughout their career so they get paid more money. It's an obvious case. It's not bad. That's a good spin on it. So Wilson Contreras had to take one for the Players Association there. It's going to be a hell of a, a hell of an example to put out there. Hell of an example. The Contreras family, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of catching. It's, it's like the new Molinas. Yeah, they kind of are. Uh, all right, we got two mailbag questions. Shout out to to the mailbag. Where what's the email address again? Info at bronxpinstripes.com. That's where they're sending. Info at bronxpinstripes.com. Shoot them over. Uh, we're going to read them. We're going to do these uh, once a week. So get them in. Yeah, we'll probably do them every thursday or friday episode obviously depending on when the series is is how we've been recording first one john brokish says hey guys i think everyone agrees with you on how important juan soto is to this lineup and also with the fact that he seems to be enjoying being a yankee we all want the yankees to sign soto to a contract after the season in april when watching soto get on base over and over then watching judge stanton rizzo ground into double play or strike out behind him i wonder if the thought crosses his mind that there might be a better option next year with guys that will drive him in and uh, and score more runs of course it's only been one month and a lot can change but the thought has certainly crossed my mind and it makes me nervous about our chances of re-signing soto what do you think first of all john that thought also crossed my mind <laughs> it's uh I don't. I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think it has any real bearing on on Soto. I think again. I, I talked about this last episode in the sense that like Soto's going to get what he wants, no matter what team he's playing on. I think he's going to get a very similar contract at the end of the day. He's going to put out his his wants, his needs, and then he's going to find and make sure that the team that he wants to play in, the the city that he wants to play in, is is going to give him the things that he wants. And uh, if he likes playing in New York and if we're all reading the tea leaves correctly and we see the, the guy shining and doing the, the right thing in the pinstripes and really embracing this role, I think he's going to be a New York Yankee. I think, I, I think that's, that's it. I think I want his experience to be as good as possible. So they need to stop hitting into double plays. Get that. It's not that, that, that makes for a better experience. And I think with a, uh, an in sync, Aaron judge is going to only help that. So, um, I think it's going to be up to the New York Yankees to decide if they want him or they, or they choose not to, because I think that's what it's going to be. Um, when I, I forget if it was last episode or two episodes ago, I talked about the athletic article that was talking about how Soto did not really click in San Diego. One of the reasons was because it's far away from the Dominican Republic and he's, he is likes to be closer to home. He, the article sort of alluded to him being an East coast player that they expect him to be long-term signing with an East coast or maybe a, a team in the South to get closer access to the, to the Dominican. Okay. So it's like the, you know, the opposite of, of coasts for, uh, for Otani and the Japanese yeah. player. So the East coast guys, 
Dominican uh, players and, and guys who have family, uh, you know, below the United States want to stay on the East Coast. I get it. Time zones are, are the same. Like the world is round. Kyrie Irving thinks they're different, but they're not. <laughs> I, um, there's a there's 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 something to be said there. Easy flights back and forth. And and as a New York Yankee, Juan Soto can maximize his earning potential in every possible way. Every possible way. I don't think that. You know, the fact that Judge, Stanton, and Rizzo were struggling in April, the thought crossed my mind because I'm cynical. I think if the Yankees have a good season, that doesn't mean win the World Series. If they have a good season, they make the playoffs, there's going to be good vibes around Soto and the Yankees, right? I think there w- it would have been differently had they had another season like last year with Soto. The team is around 500 and they missed the playoffs. Then Soto's like, all right, maybe this isn't where I want to be. You agree with that if that happened or happens? Yeah, I do agree with that. I think that there has to be obviously a a true dedication from the team to winning, and I, I think that them trading for him and uh, you know a signing of him would would put this forward. Obviously, they also signed the the best pitcher in baseball at the time uh, with Garrett Cole, uh, reigning Cy Young winner. So they've 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 proved that they will do that if they were to sign him. To me, that's that's kind of like the last thing that they need to do. They need to sign. They extended obviously, and signed Aaron Judge for the rest of his career. If they are out there uh, doing this with Soto, it proves that they are willing to pay for a very good team and will build around him. And the Yankees know what this team is without Juan Soto. They're, you can't replace Juan Soto with any other player in the league. You can't. He's irreplaceable. And that is why the other reason why I believe that the Yankees will absolutely back up the Brinks truck for this guy and do what they need to. And we're seeing this. And I know it's a different story in the sense that Otani has another market in Japan and it's a massive baseball market with a lot of, uh, you know, potential sponsors and and spending that happens over there. Plus he's um, got to, he's got to pay off but, his gambling debts. Yeah. But he, you're seeing how much money that team is making from Otani, you know, outside the signing, like they're, they're making their money back They're in, in, in spades. So this is not like they're spending money where they're not going to see it in return. They're going to see it in return. And when you put a better baseball product on the field with a guy like Juan Soto, you can't, you know, you, you can't underestimate how massive, uh, the, the revenue is going to be for the New York Yankees. If they're doing things the right way and winning. It's the best situation in arguably pro sports. If the Yankees are uh, at the best and, and, and winning. Yeah. I, I, and I just think that it's the Yankees as a franchise make so much money that, and there's no contract that would sink them, right? Like I'm sure there's contracts. They don't want to, they don't want to sign thing. contracts. I get it. There's no contract that will sink them. There's no single contract that'll sink them. Correct. And that's, that's a big deal. And especially one that brings in as much fanfare as a guy like Juan Soto. Cause that's and what someone who is still in his base, like beginning of his baseball prime. Dude, he's, yeah, as long as he's been here, that man is in right in his prime, like smacking them. We are technically, the best one but technically we baseball prime is like 27 to 32. That, that I feel like yeah. is, is the, is the baseball prime usually. And that's usually when guys, you get a guy at 29 or 30 in free agency. So you get the back half of his prime. Then you have to deal with the, the, the 30 year old years with Juan Soto. You're going to have to deal with the 30 year old years too, because you're going to have to sign him to like a 15 year deal, but you get all the prime. You get it all. Give me that. prime. You get all of it. Yeah. And him, give me Juan Soto, not prime. <laughs> Give me an old Juan Soto, you know. Fine. Yeah, God, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna be we're gonna be in our fifties when Juan Soto's done playing for the Yankees. Well, you'll be in your sixties. Speak for yourself, <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Tim Kirkus says, "Hi guys, I'm a Brit Yankee fan living in Spain. We have so I feel like the the most dedicated mailbaggers to this show are British Yankees fans. Shout out to you guys." Living in Spain and have been listening to the show for years. I was super excited about this year and am having a hoot watching the day games, time zone issues, and Soto in particular. I just wanted to say that Stanton is a menace. Taurus is a bum. Judge needs to take a long, hard look at himself. And I'm a better player than Grisham. And I gave up playing when I had uh, when I left my American school in Singapore when I was nine. Anyway, pitching is awesome despite the sweaty Rodon. Sh- uh, shaped mess in the World Series is pretty much in the bag, as you, as you Yanks might say. See, now he's calling us Yanks in he's the mailbag about the Yankees. It's, You're it's confusing, confusing me, Tim. Yeah. Keep up the excellent work and get Andrew's dad on all the best, Tim. 
that wasn't really a question, more of just a, a here are my thoughts type of thing. Yeah, and which is fine. We want you guys to get your thoughts out. Uh, put in some mailbags, send them info at bronxpinstripes.com. We really, you know, we want to uh, make this a staple uh, as it has been in the past. We want to get back to that and, and really get, get, uh, get your guys' voices and thoughts onto the show. Um, appreciate it, Tim. He's, he's bounced around all over the place. So you, the, thing about, the thing about fans uh, on the other side of the pond is that they really do have to have a hardcore dedication because of the time difference. That time difference is, uh, is nothing to, to like, nothing to sniffle at. It's a big deal. You got to really plan your day. And I understand you can get, uh, you can get games on demand at any point, but you got to stay away from news cycles. You got to do a bunch of that stuff to, to be able to really consume it in the way that a fan wants to consume it. So uh, shout out to all you guys uh, on the other side. All right. Pre- appreciate it, side. John and Tim. Like Scott said, info at bronxpinstripes.com to get your mailbags in. We'll do that uh, end of next week. But the next episode will be Monday after the Tampa series. We'll talk to you then.